Okay, just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> okay, uh, just scribbled up there real fast. And uh, tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. It goes along with all this. We've been looking at the battle that goes uh, all the way through history between God and, and, and Satan. And uh, Satan, of course, was defeated at the cross and so on like that. And so I want to talk about tonight, and I just wrote some things down, about Satan's policy of evil today. And there are three major areas he really attacks that we need to be aware of. And we're going to talk a little bit about his attacks. So I'll, I'll just share a few things tonight, if that's okay. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. Ephesians 3, 8 through 12. Paul says unto me, whom less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. And by the way, by the church, we're sending a message to those principalities and powers in the heavenlies that are Satan and his angels, okay? The manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we, we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Paul's just telling his whole ministry right there in a sense. Now, because of our impact upon heavenly places, uh, Satan looks down and he, we remind him of his defeat, okay? Uh, uh, we remind him that he was defeated by Christ by his cross work, but also his resurrection. And Satan's contempt, because of that, is intensified, his attacks against us. And so Satan's policy of evil is designed to respond against our privilege of the mystery program. Uh, I hope tonight you'll see how important this mystery program is and how he hates it so, okay? Uh, so that you'll pray harder for your church and uh, for the message that we do have here. Uh, Israel is designed by God to make an impact upon God's glory among the nations of the world. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 and following. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, Moses speaking, that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all the statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call up on him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? And so Moses is telling the nation of Israel is their responsibility to live what they're going to be telling them to do so that the rest of the nations will step back and see the glory of God, okay? And likewise, you and I, in the body of Christ, we are to live such according to the mystery of the gospel of grace, the Pauline uh, program, in such a way that it sends a message to the heavenlies about the glory of God. See, Israel gives the glory here on earth. We give the glory in such a way that it's referred to that we're teaching the wisdom of God to those principalities and powers in heavenly places. Okay? Likewise, we, the mystery body, are to impact God's glory where we will dwell one day, the heavenlies, but today to glorify God before principalities and powers in those heavenly places. Ephesians 3.10 says this, to the intent now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. It's the church's responsibility to make the manifold wisdom of God understandable 
and, and, and what? Uh, brought to honor to those principalities and powers in heavenly places. Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. What high places? In the heavenlies, in the second heaven, okay? Not God's abode, but in the, in the heavenlies, okay? So in doing this, we constantly remind Satan and his cohorts of God's victory over them, making a show of them openly, okay? Uh, we'll look at a little bit more about this, what Satan does. Safe, Satan has suffered a great humiliation and embarrassment over the revelation of the mystery. It took him by surprise. Nobody knew about it, and it defeated him. And so it was a crushing defeat blow to his big plans of possession of the heavens and also of the earth and a destructive belittlement of his self-proclaimed superior wisdom and his own conceit and his own declared greatness. It showed that he wasn't so wise. It showed he wasn't so great, that God is all sovereign, okay? And so the mystery, uh, Paul calls it the new man, us is a constant irritation and reminder of his downfall and his future punishment. He's not been punished yet. He will, but what Christ accomplished guarantees he will. And that will take one place one day in the future. So Satan's policy of evil and hatred of us has been born out of this truth of his defeat. So Satan seeks revenge on all those who proclaim the mystery message. He seeks to drown, drown out the hidden wisdom of God by means of making Christendom a quagmire of doctrinal confusion. Christianity or Christendom in chaos, doubt, hatred, and division among Christendom. Has he been successful? Ah, we know he has. Ephesians 4.14 says this, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind or every storm of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, craftiness whereby they lay in wait they lay in wait, lie in wait, I'm sorry, to deceive. By doing this, he effectively hides the wisdom of God. Through his devices, Satan makes members of the body of Christ look ridiculous. He makes them look foolish that often they're an embarrassment to our Savior. And when they, he can get us or Christians to do that, Satan laughs and rejoices about our ignorance of the truth. When Satan attacks, he tries to obscure, to obliterate knowledge of the mystery of Christ in the minds of God's people. Again, Ephesians 4, 12 and 13 says this here, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, more matured man, that's what that means, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ where he begins to live out who he is in Christ. Huh? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, right? That Christ liveth in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. Uh, when I begin to live that out, that's the full measure of the Christian walk then. That's when we're maturing then. And Satan, he has the desire to prevent us from ever coming to that place in our life. And one of the great ways he does this is to keep us blinded to the truth of the mystery program. Interestingly, Satan doesn't try to keep people ignorant of Bible truth as a whole. 
but mainly just one particular category of Bible doctrine. The mystery program. <laughs> it's amazing. Satan works at keeping those who are Christian, children, immature, in doctrinal understanding and causing discord among each other. And when you say, has he been successful, how many denominations are there in the states today? <laughs> and then you step back and say, he's been more than successful, has he not been? Okay? And so he's worked overtime. Back to Ephesians 4.14 again. Uh, Satan causes Christians to believe things. It talks there every wind of doctrine, you know, and so on. He causes Christians to believe things they should not believe. So he blinds them to truth. First uh, Timothy 4.1 says this. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, their teachings. Ephesians 6, 11, 12 again. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the trickery, the craftiness of the devil. And then we wrestle against that. So Satan's very name means what? What's Satan's name mean? Slanderer. He seeks to accuse us with malicious intent to malign our character, to attack our reputation, to belittle our names so that we won't have any credibility and he tries his best to vilify us with accusing remarks. Stand up for the truth of rightly dividing and see what happens. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Amen. This is why Paul says in Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. There are too many Christians who give place to the devil with their doctrines. It's amazing what people believe today. It's amazing how gullible and vulnerable people are today concerning truth. When Satan causes believers to fall for his traps, then in heavenly places, he's able to speak up evil of us before God before his principalities and powers. That's his most fervent desire, to be able to go to the heavenlies there and give his report like they did in Job 1, Job 2, and give his report, look at your people. They're so stupid, they're so ignorant, and it lifts the pride of his angels that are even in the heavenlies. So that gives him that ammunition. Satan, he relishes to carry out spiritual wickedness against us in heavenly places, which Christians on earth give him that opportunity when we succumb to his trickery, his wiles, and we follow his doctrines and we're blind to the mystery's truth. That's why Paul said, 1 Timothy 5, 14, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. You see that? For some are already turned aside after Satan. Too many already have given him the opportunity to be a reproach and slander them before God through mockery of Satan. He loves doing that. A war against sound doctrine, against the revelation of the mystery. It's been launched by Satan to maintain the ignorance of truth among God's people. And I'm not going to turn to Ephesians 6, Kelly, okay? But again, our enemy is not flesh and blood. Uh, we, we fight against spiritual beings. Uh, Satan and his angels who have great authority. Satan uses men to oppose us, yet he's behind them. 
just because a person gets 